Hi, and welcome to the second episode of Heroes of Halftime. Our special guest is a multi-awarded star player, and I feel he doesn't need any introduction. Mr. Football himself, Stefan Schrock. Good afternoon, Stefan. How are you? Good afternoon. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you for gracing this uh, episode. Um, how's, how are you right now? Like, how are you dealing with the ECQ? Is there cabin fever? How, how are you dealing with it? So obviously, uh, it's getting towards its end. Uh, we all are tired, I think, from each other. <laughs> and, um, but besides that, uh, it's also a good new experience. There's always, always something good, even though uh, it seems hard at the moment, but there's always something good that shines through. And uh, I'd rather focus on that than, than on the things I cannot do. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of your videos of you working out in your, in your condominium with your kids. It's actually cute, you know, your kids in the parking lot working out as well. <laughs> How do you maintain that kind of discipline? It came over the years that I started to be really focused on, on what gave me this life. And uh, football gave me everything I have. I own, I eat, I, I wear. Football gave me everything. And the discipline uh, just kept me on, on the right path. And uh, passing it somehow in this time of, of uh, not ideal circumstances, this to my kids is uh, very important to me. Talking about uh, how football has become your whole life, can I ask some personal questions? Like, let's talk about Shrock as the person. Of course, you are the hero. You're an icon. You're a legend right now when it comes to football, and you've been awarded with so many awards. But I want to know what is driving you? What, what is that passion about? Where did you get your passion? I'm born in Germany and I have a German father and a Filipino mom. And uh, when I was six, seven, eight, uh, somewhere there, my parents divorced. And obviously the money got short with my mom and she tried to, to uh, get along and give us everything uh, while she raised us and having two, three jobs at the same time. So football was always there for me and football was um, a sort of out, like a way out of, of being not poor, poor, but of sacrificing uh, good things in life, the finer things in life. And uh, through football, I, I knew I can achieve it. Uh, back then, I wouldn't realize how far the way is or how many sacrifices I have to give on the, on the way. But uh, it kept me, kept me focused. It kept me away from bad things, from, from uh, bad friends and all the way to, to this point, talking to you. And uh, I'm very, very grateful for what football gave me. And uh, that's why I try to, to give every, every day at least 100% to my profession. So when did you know that uh, you had this talent for football? Did it start when you were a kid? I, uh, actually, my dad was a professional boxer. So I actually started boxing with him. So... Uh, I wouldn't just kick the ball and play with, with my friends uh, in the backyard just for fun. And then uh, one day, a parent picked up his son and said, hey, you're quite okay on the ball. Why, why not join a football club? And uh, I asked my parents and they said, well, do it, try it. And eventually, I became really good. And um, so that's how I, how I stayed in football or kept playing or started playing. Because it's, uh, I'm coming from a sporty family, so it was just normal that, that they want me to be out and uh, doing activities. Was this your dream when you were a kid, to become a star player? Yeah, I always dreamed of being a football player, uh, earning money, playing for a, a huge crowd, uh, being popular. That was always a dream of mine. Like I said earlier, I would not realize how far this is actually away from me, but uh, I kept dreaming and I turned it into to the reality of mine. As a football player, I think I achieved pretty much what I wanted to achieve. Uh, and there's every day a learning process for me as a, as a dad, as a husband, as a friend. To be successful in one part doesn't mean that you are successful in any part of, of life. So for me, it's every day a, 
learning experience and I uh, try to to give back to people. I try to show off pathways for maybe kids they're having the same circumstances as I had. So uh, hopefully they will follow my path and uh, experience the good things that I have experienced. So right now everybody looks up to you, Shock. Like everybody looks to you now as someone like a mentor, a dad. What I'm asking is like, what are your plans in helping other football players right now? Do you have plans in the future and how to transfer that kind of skill that you have? I will, I'm having thoughts or I'm planning things for the future after my active career, obviously to, to help kids. Uh, I think to be very, very good at something or to become very, very good at something, you have to have a drive and mostly uh, people that are insanely driven coming from broken up families, seeing things in their youth and their childhood. I'm not saying the golden spoon kids generation is, is not uh, capable of achieving something, but I feel those who are coming up from a very difficult childhood can achieve more than or faster than the, the regular ones. And in a, in the future, I'm planning to help those kids. If football becomes stable and giving them a good money or earning, uh, I would try to build an academy beside my career and uh, educating them kids, not only about football, also about the school and, and life, because football is a three-hour thing a day. Life is the other 21, and uh, there is so much more than just kicking the ball and uh, going to the gym. So can you say that the drive you have now, because it's very evident, your passion, your drive, your discipline is so evident in how, the way you play, the way you conduct yourself, the way you answer. I've been reading much about you, uh, Shrock, and I've read something like you want to win. You always want to win. And it's like a winner's attitude. Can you say that that drive came from how you grew up? Like, like you were saying, those children who came from difficult backgrounds have an opportunity to more dri to be more driven into succeeding yes yeah um uh, i i have experienced both like i said my dad was a professional boxer so we lived quite well uh after the divorce my mom depended on the social welfare so uh, whatever we had we had to share or cut it in 10 pieces to make sure it will last until the end of the month so so for me, I experienced it myself. And as you see, many, many athletes come actually from broken backgrounds. Those two at the very, very top. We have our, our very own Manny Pacquiao, who mm -hmm. came basically from the state to, to being the most famous Filipino ever, maybe. And uh, I feel it is, it's, uh, as we say, Cyan, that it has to be like that. But it's also, you can turn it into a, very, very good thing for your life. No, I really believe in what you're saying. I mean, you know, if you're driven, it's because of something in the past that's driving you to, to be more successful. I was also wondering, um, what, are your, what are your other plans in terms of, let's say, when, when the lockdown is already lifted and there is a protocol from the government? I mean, PFF has been very clear in following all of these protocols. The upcoming events are like the Suzuki Cup, and we're still going to. I'm, I'm you're, you're still going to play for the qualifiers, right? And yeah. um, do you think we have a good chance in finally being part of FIFA World Cup this 2022? <laughs> um, I'm never join a competition to just, just be part of it. What I do care about and what I can control is that uh, my team, including me, will be in absolutely top shape, well prepared for whatever comes in the next up three, three games left. So for the next three games, there will be uh, 20 lapu lapus if you want, so on the pitch. And we will, uh, we will definitely try our best to go to the next round and we will succeed in this. Uh, you have... You have to have a clear belief in what you want and what you see. Mm -hmm. And I do have it. I want to make history. I'm, I'm a winner. I, there's nothing else what matters to me than winning. And in terms of 
of competitiveness and uh, adjustments, I think I can be a role model for, for all my teammates. And that's what I try to transfer into the team. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, football and the, the, the industry itself is very competitive. You have to be very good for you to be able to, am I right in saying that you have to be very good, you have to excel to be able to uh, get the benefits of what the sport offers. Let's say I come from a not wealthy family and I'm struggling and I have this dream to become a football player. But, you know, like there are so many others better than me. What would you, you know, like advise them? Because it's, it's, not, it's not easy to stay on top. It's not easy to even get there. Am I right in saying that? You're absolutely there. But um, I give you this. In, in Europe, obviously, football is huge. Football is is uh, religion and then there is football next to make it in germany is absolutely impossible to make it to a professional team is absolutely impossible if when you're a young kid and and you dream because there is millions millions of of kids want to be a football player and living day in day out on on that dream so i, I still made it i'm not the tallest i'm not the quickest i'm not the most skillful player you will ever meet no absolutely not but if you're willing to put in the work and if you're willing to take the sacrifices of a long path you will succeed in a way i let's transfer this to to the philippines my tita's son my cousin he wants to be a football player so my tita asked me she's like oh, I, i don't know it's a, such a hustle for him to go to the training and going back and she asked me if it is it worth it to sacrifice all youth to this dream i asked her i said if you find me with him having one day uh let's say when he is 18 20 he can earn 150 or 200,000 at the minimum wage maybe i don't know if it, is it worth it to you she said absolutely yes yeah absolutely yes and that's what many 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 filipinos there are breadwinners, many kids are breadwinners, many uh, young adults are breadwinners for their family. If you want to achieve something, you have to have a drive and you can achieve things. Uh, football is, is uh, if you live it 20 hours, you have it in your head and you can go very, very far, even though you're not the best, not the tallest, not the fastest. I learned one thing. After hard work, what follows is only result. And this is what I can give to all the kids out there who want to be a football player, want to play for the Aspens, want to give their families a better life because it did for me. Mm -hmm. What follows hard work is result. So you're saying that once you work for it, you'll definitely get somewhere. You can't just sit down. You will definitely get somewhere. And you need to, you need to be excelling and doing more than the others to get to where you want to be right is that what you're saying yes oh that's yes deep. absolutely it's not a god-given thing that you can kick the ball or that you uh, you can run 90 minutes or that you outlast everyone it's not god-given it's something you work for it's just as simple as that i'm not an outstanding uh, athlete or an outstanding uh, god give god choose me for for something no it's not i choose to be something special and that's why i became something special so um do you have plans for your children to follow your footsteps is that how there you we have the <laughs> there we have the, the first issue they barely enjoy uh, moving activities let's say it like that they grow up different than me they grow up here in manila and the football is not on every other corner so i don't think they will they will uh, achieve something very big in sports, but uh, that's okay to me. Uh, they can still do something else besides football and uh, try to make the, a big name for themselves. And um, one thing I also notice about you is that you have a very wonderful family, a wonderful wife who supports you very much. You have that strong foundation to help you succeed some more. Yeah, 
your your inner circle is very very important um I'm with my wife for 16 years and uh obviously there's rough times at at uh, at every point of of relationships but uh, so far we always got each other back and uh, it's important to have a small circle where where you can those who you you can build on uh, telling your dreams because usually it's those very close to you saying hey bro you're too far away from this or this is not possible this is not within your reach and uh, usually it's the closest one who telling you this you cannot achieve something or you this is too this is out of your range or something i think then you're with the wrong people uh, when you have people that live your dream and have a clear belief in you then uh, you have the right environment to grow correct um is there are you do you have any plans in helping develop football in this country not that you will retire you're still so young to retire but <laughs> let's say during the time that you know you can relax a bit i mean i see that your heart is towards developing philippine football or will you go back to germany i hope not the no, okay <laughs> not not no, not in the next years uh, i still enjoy it uh, too much being here in the philippines and uh, I have no plans where to settle and what uh, where I will see myself in uh, five years or ten years because every time I did it it brought me somewhere else so I just enjoy the moment the present moment um, I went with the youth national team with the under 22 to the sea games for example mm -hmm. uh, I follow each and every one of them on Instagram and uh, when I was there, I was a little worried about the work ethic and everything. So I spoke a lot to the to the kids. They have to understand that uh, just because you're talented or you're tall, faster than anyone else, you eventually success. It's not like that. So I spoke a lot to those who I think can respond the best. And uh, seeing them every day at six thirty, going up, doing their program. Uh, having double sessions, even triple sessions a day makes me very proud because they learned, they responded very, very well. And I feel I can give a lot of things to, to young kids in the Philippines. So I will be involved in the Philippine football for long, I hope. Either as a, a PFF maybe or as a coach, I don't know where, we'll, where I can help best, but I will definitely help whenever I get asked. Do you have plans of putting up an academy? So you can train more academy uh, yeah of course uh, academy is uh, not not one of these academies that uh, already exist I'm, I'm more on giving back i'm more on giving opportunities to to people so it will be for the less fortunate uh, people outside of metro manila i feel on in the province there is a lot of talent and as you see the Philippines is full of, of crafty players, of crafty mm -hmm. uh, sportsmen, athletes. And, uh, if you see how less the government really invests in, in sports and how good the outcome is, it's unbelievable. It's uh, almost surreal. If, if, if I talk to the players or the other athletes at the SEA Games, with uh, barely support, they were managed to pull up great, great things. And I feel uh, in this country, there's so much possible. I think the Philippines can have in 15, 20 years, maybe eight, nine, ten players in in the top leagues of Europe. And uh, mm -hmm. I hopefully I can help them achieving their dreams and uh, having a good life for their families. Having said that, if if the government were to hear you, or if let's say companies can hear you, what what kind of support do you want them to give football in general? Probably not you, but in general how can like how can they give the opportunity to this this talented uh players but doesn't have the means to actually train better there is uh money is always a, a huge thing money is always a huge thing and especially uh in a country like the philippines where uh, football is considered as a rich sport like when you when i uh, i cannot out and kick the ball in a pitch or in a cage uh, playing two versus two with my kids or something it's not possible because you have to rent a pitch you have to 
you have to pay for it, the tuition, then it's two hours. When I grew up, I was eight hours a day in the cage behind my house and playing football with my friends. So if they make it a little bit more accessible for uh, for the people to play football, then football will become huge because the Filipinos are so talented. We are made for football. Mm. We are five foot seven in average. We are speed full of thin people who can who have so much agility and abilities on on the ball, off the ball. There is so much what the what God gave the Filipinos for football already. And uh, I think you you just have to make it more accessible, more on a on a middle class sport than uh, as a rich sport. And then from there on everything is possible for the Philippines. Everything mm-hmm. So you mean more more facilities of football will be will be yeah definitely we have a great like we have uh, Boston for example who's sponsoring football for ten twelve years I don't know how much money he burned for the sport already just to to make it where it is right now and then we have our club owner Leroy Jansson from from Saris he's giving so much uh, to the to the players to the club to to the Philippines. Mm-hmm. We made it with the club series. We are ranked number one in Southeast Asia. And the yeah. club is nine years old, which is unbelievable. Or oh, eight years only. So usually it takes uh, 80, a good 80 years to, to achieve what, what the club has achieved in such a short time. But if people are willing to support, and it, it has to be not in big numbers, it just has to everyone a little bit and then you can give the people a tool to provide for their families, to provide for themselves, to live their dream. And I love the way you say we Filipinos. <laughs> I am Filipino. Uh, yeah, I love that. We Filipinos. <laughs> anyway, um, before we end this, um, before we end the podcast, I'd like to ask you one more question. If if there is a message that you want to give out, because everybody's locked down now and people can't get out. And I've been talking to football fans and they've been itching to watch football players who keep on saying, we just want to kick outside, you know, we'll keep distance. I mean, if there's anything that, if, if there's a message that you want to tell them, what would it be? I think the circumstances are not ideal. It's everything that happens around you even the COVID is, we have to give emotion to this and we make it a bad, a big thing. Uh, if we just follow the orders of, of the government and all the people who are helping around this massive uh, problem we're all facing, the better we practice it, the earlier we can see each other and go back to maybe a new normal. Mm-hmm. And to all the people who are suffering at the moment or uh, finding it hard to motivate yourself. There is always a good thing in everything. You just have to acknowledge it and recognize it. And um, having the belief that it will be better soon. Mm-hmm. So if you embrace the the problems, the circumstances, the, the pain, the, the discomfort at this moment, we will all enjoy football and the performances even more after. So stay put, stay ready, and don't lose hope. That's the the main thing. Have a clear mind and focus on the good things. There is good things in every household, in every problem you're facing, in every circumstance you are. There is good things and focus on them rather than on the problems. Such a wonderful outlook, Shock. Thank you very much for joining me. You heard it from him himself. That's a winner's attitude. So I hope everybody was inspired. I mean, I myself was getting inspired while talking to him. And I think this is the reason why he is Mr. Football. And I believe that with, with his help and with the other people's help in the industry, we will all one day achieve what he was saying about being having like top nine players in the world um, scenario. Am I correct, Chuck? Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much and stay safe. Always. Thank you so much for we'll having me. Stay safe. Games. We'll see you in the games. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.